Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. If you like what I do, then please go to my website and leave a review. Um, you can leave a written review or a video review and I'd quite like for people to use that service because it's costing me $15 a month to, to offer it. So it'd be quite nice um, to get a little bit more, a little bit of activity on there. There's, there's been some, but I'd love to see more videos of people just, just saying, you know, how, what I do, if it's useful and stuff. Um... We'll just say hello. Uh, what's the other thing? You can also support um, this free service. Uh, my PayPal is j paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland, and the link is on my website. And if you want to help to support the running costs of this free service. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to start off, oh, I'm going to start off by mentioning a message that I got. I want to get some kind of opinions because I'm a little bit worried um, about my voice. <clears throat> so the message, I'm not going to say who it's from, I'm just going to say the, the message. Uh, hi, this is on Facebook, hi, love your soft voice good start it's a lovely start in fact it would have been nice if that had been the end as well because it's a lovely message and then can you try not to whistle when you say S's and T's that sound actually that sound actually interferes with falling asleep I'm so sorry, I don't mean to be critical, but I think it will help your other listeners as well. Thank you for all you do. God bless. Um, and it says you did a countdown podcast from 79, 78, 77 down to 60. I was laughing hysterically listening to it. And it says countdown from a hundred. Well, okay, I'll address the first thing first. I did reply, and it was it was a nice conversation. There was no hostility or anything. Um, and what I replied, and also she, this person, this man or lady, said, um, and I hope I didn't offend you because I really am coming from a place of trying to help make you even more successful it's hard to offer constructive feedback without sounding like a winner a whiner are we good so I replied <laughs> no I replied to be honest I don't mean to whistle that's my voice I guess it's some kind of speech impediment I don't want to whistle like an old-fashioned kettle. And, and she says, you don't always whistle except whatever. But uh, I thought I'd address it because I do sometimes comment on, you know, if I hear myself whistle when I'm talking. So if I say the word whistle, so whistle. Um, it's the way I talk, and I'm probably not gonna change the way I talk. If I'm honest with you, you know, I I'm always looking to make improvements. But with 
And this is talking about counting down, so that would be a hypnosis session rather than a let me bore you to sleep recording. So with a, a you know a recording a sleep hypnosis recording of course the my voice, the tone, the softness and all that stuff is relevant as is the content of what I say and and I don't feel I've ever been pulled up or pulled up I've not been pulled off over that no one's ever pulled me off over the the T's was it S's and T's S the way I talk I don't know what what do you do maybe maybe I have a lisp and I didn't realise I had a lisp and nobody's ever told me that I've got a lisp and I'm kind of okay with having a lisp if I've got one I don't think it's like prominent like really um I don't think so. Maybe it is. But. It's, it's, I don't know. It's kind of caught me off sur by surprise. And. Because the rest of what. This person was saying was. You know. It's a friendly. You know. And also. You know. Saying. Didn't mean to offend you. And all that stuff. So I kind of thought. Well I'm not going to take offence. Just. Just. Uh, But I'm kind of thinking, what do I do with that information? If someone said, oh, you got dandruff, then you can go and use dandruff shampoo. You can do something about it. It's a practical thing, isn't it? Or someone says, oh, you're, you're, you're smelly. Or, I don't know, you know, which isn't a nice thing for anyone to say to another person or to hear from another person I guess um, but you can practically do something about it you know have a wash put some deodorant on or whatever but if someone says to me you're too short well other than wear high heel shoes there's very little I can do or maybe wear a top hat or an old policeman's hat you know really big tall ones that you keep sandwiches in and bits of cake I had a girlfriend once that was it that's the whole thing just wanted to tell you I've been keeping it inside for years I just wanted to tell someone I once had a girlfriend really I did and she she split up with me right and she said to me and I don't know why she decided this was relevant but she said my eyebrows are too close to my eyes <laughs> I mean what do you want them to be in the middle of my forehead or on my knees I mean what where should the eyebrows be they're supposed to be above your eyes hence the word eye brows it's just above your eye I know some people have their eyebrows might be a little bit higher but it's kind of where it should be I think it's not like my eyebrows are underneath my eyes <laughs> that'd be a bit strange I suppose I don't know but your eyebrows are too close to your eyes and I thought that was weird because there's so many other things to pick fault with as far as how I look. Why would you choose my eyebrows? That would be the one, that would be one of the last things I would even notice if I was looking at myself. It, you know, it'd be right down the list. It might be on the list, I don't know, if I was really gonna go to town 
and try and find as much fault as possible but but it's something that I can't do anything about unless I get some sellotape and like sellotape my eyebrows into a constant look of uh, you know startle like oh really amazement always look like I'm amazed wherever I go so what do I do with what do I go and have elocution lessons learn how to speak correctly I thought I was doing all right for the last 49 years I actually thought and just just I actually thought that my verbal skills were pretty good you know I, I worked in call centers for years and years and years and the one thing I kept being told is that I was really good verbally and I was pretty much the best as far as talking to the customers and talking nicely and you know doing the job correctly and being friendly you know at all times and stuff like that no one ever once said you know you've got a bit of a lisp I know you're the you're pretty much the top salesperson out of 250 people and you know or maybe second there's, there's Jody but he's, he's above you to be fair but you know you're the second top person out of 250 people you have the highest conversion from quote to sale out of anybody that's ever worked here but that bloody lisp that bloody lisp is just getting on my nerves so yeah I, I didn't maybe it's one of my blind spots obviously uh, bragging isn't a blind spot because I was just bragging about being really good at sales but I was it's one of those things like but I'm not bragging about it I suppose maybe I was you know what in a way I'm bragging about something that I used to be able to do something that I was successful at doing that I was very good at doing so I don't I'm not really bragging I'm kind of it's more of a statement of fact but whether I could do it now I don't know I don't know if I'd, I have those skills anymore or the patience uh, to do that kind of thing but we're all good at something aren't we we're all good at certain things I just and I was good at it but I didn't even like it a lot of the time so I was good at something I didn't enjoy doing which was difficult that was a very maybe there's a lot of people like that maybe there's people that work in the place or doctors I'm not comparing myself to that kind of professional person but they're really good at what they do but perhaps they don't enjoy it you know like a heart surgeon might be the best heart surgeon in Europe but just dreads going to work because it just doesn't they don't get uh, the same satisfaction or enjoyment as they would if they were painting a, a wall or doing decorating maybe that's the thing that they're passionate about the thing that gives them pleasure and joy but they feel obligated to use their natural talent or you know to, to, the the excellent the because they excel at something that's really important to their society so they feel they have to do that going against their their own happiness possibly Now that was boring. 
that was born. Yep. <laughs> what, was I, what was I even talking about? What was I even talking about? So I don't... Um, as far as counting down, if I want to count down from 79 to 60, I will count down from 79 to 60. If I want to count down from 100 to 1... That's what I'll do. If I want to say I'm going to count down from 100 down to 1, and I start at 49 and count down to 33, that's what I'll do. I can do what I want. They're my recordings. And sometimes I do that for a reason. You know, there's, there's more to it than just me, maybe not in these recordings possibly, but there might be more to this than you realise either as well. More than I realise maybe, but... There might be more to the hypnotic stuff that I do than is obvious. You know, I do know a few little bits and bobs. I'm not just making it all up as I go along. You know, I've, uh, I'm a trained therapist, you know, I'm, I am, <laughs> seems hard to believe, but I actually am. I've read a few books as well. And I've got a bit of experience doing this. 14 years doing making recordings. As well as seeing clients and doing hypnosis with people. Doing group sessions back in even 2006, 2007. Doing group relaxation sessions with not that many people. Maybe 12, 15 people. Maybe sometimes 18 people. Sometimes four people. So I'm, I'm not just uh, I'm not just randomly <laughs> doing this stuff, you know. I'm no expert. I'm not an expert on anything. But I'm not, you know. I do kind of know what I'm doing. And if I didn't, I don't think that people would listen. And more and more people are listening. The, the deep sleep whisper hypnosis and the relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks are two of my most popular podcasts day in, day out. They're, they're rising up to like the 800, 800 plus downloads each a day. And they're actually right, they're rising higher than all the other podcasts. In fact, the relaxation for stress, anxiety, that one is looking to possibly be the most popular podcast out of all of the ones I do. Although I've got the two sleep sessions, hypnosis podcasts that are way ahead of everything else because all of my sleep stuff stuff goes on there so I, I kind of think I'm doing something right and there's that kind of thing as I well if I'm going to ask if I'm going to um, if I'm going to welcome people telling me what they like then shouldn't I really also welcome people telling me what they don't like And that does make sense. But I don't want to hear or read what people don't like. And I think that's the human being inside me. It, it's upsetting. It is. Or shall I say it's upsetting. It is. That's uh, you know, it's almost. I remember that one I had about yawning. Can you stop yawning? Well, there's a part of me that kicks in from when I was younger, when I was in my twenties, 
if you tell me you didn't like something, I would not be able to stop myself from doing it. It, it was like an impulsive, I couldn't stop myself. And I used to get into trouble a lot. Um, I'd lost jobs, friends, everything, you know, because uh, I couldn't, almost like I couldn't control what I was doing. Um, I'm not like that anymore. You know, I'm an adult now, ish, kind of. But there is a little part of me that kicks in a bit when, and maybe these people listen to me understand what I'm talking about. You know, when someone says, I don't like it when you do that. And there's that part of, that part of you that goes, hmm. That urge to want to do it more often. I think ultimately it's just criticism. I don't think anybody, and I might be wrong here, I mean, some people will say, don't talk for me, you don't know me, you don't know what I like, so, you know, but those, I'm not really interested in those kind of people. But I would guess that most people do not like being criticised. I'll tell you a story, is when I was at university, I've said, I've talked about this before, but I found it hilarious. Because um, it was so ridiculous. Uh, there was a one person that didn't like me. Right from the very... I'm going to be talking about people that don't like me during this recording. Yeah, why not? I talked about how great I was at sales. And I was good. But, in all fairness, I used to read sales books at home. I used to study selling techniques so I wasn't um, you know I lived the life I, I wasn't I wasn't just turning up for work doing the job and leaving I was thinking about it when I was at home I was listening to self help tapes sales tapes sometimes I'd be the first into work and the last out if I was on a phone call I'd stay on phone for, for an hour if I'd had to, to get that sale, even though it was time for me to go home an hour ago. In one of my sales jobs, I'd actually go in and work two or three hours a day without getting paid, just to get more sales, because I'd be on a, ben I'd be on, um, a bonus, so it'd work out that those hours I could earn maybe fifteen pound, twenty pound per hour for those hours that I went in. Because it had the way the bonus went up quite a bit after you hit a certain amount. So so I can talk about that. I can also talk about the the criticism that I had, I suppose, and at university, I really thought it was going to be brilliant. Really thought it was going to be brilliant. And the whole process started off really, 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 really badly. You know, just at home, everything, everything kind of collapsed within a couple of weeks of starting university. Um, but the person, I was living in the Buddhist community, and one of the people living there he suddenly had a tantrum and decided he hated me for some reason and it was a really weird situation so I had to move out so I had to it is a weird one yeah I had to move out find somewhere to live it was either that or go to prison so I had to move out and my girlfriend, who I just started seeing, been seeing her for a couple of months, I said to her, I don't know what to do. And she said, well, call up the university and ask them, because they'll have a list of landlords in the area to where you go. Because I was going to university in the different town to where I was living. So I did, I took her advice 
and they did indeed give me a list of numbers. I called, went and saw one of the rooms and I took it. And when I told my girlfriend, she was upset with me because I'd taken a room that was in another town, even though it was her idea. So, yeah, but I, it was a cheap room. It was the cheapest one, and I, you know, I needed to get the cheapest place I could. And then moving meant I lost the job that I was supposed to be starting at Sainsbury's. So I had all, everything sorted out. I had a girlfriend, a part-time job sorted out while I was at university in a big supermarket. So I knew I was going to be meeting new people. It was going to be good. Um, I had somewhere to live with some friends. That I was, you know, I was happy living with there until you know one person decided to. I don't know what was going on with him really, but. Anyway, it's the whole place collapsed and they ended up selling the, the building in the end. But everything, so I moved. I suddenly, I didn't have a job, didn't have any of that stuff. But it really all started weirdly at university with the success is I got a degree. So hey, that's a success, isn't it? I completed the course three years and I also got a part time job um, as well here so that was where I was living so that was good um, during part of the course but the very first day in the classroom there was I don't know how many of us it was 16 people maybe more and the teacher paired everyone up into twos. And I was paired up with what I can only describe as if you have the quietest voice I've ever heard in my life. It was almost like a little mouse whispering. <laughs> It was really quiet. Like, I can't exaggerate, but it was very quiet. Yeah, it was quiet. So she, the idea is we tell each other about each other, each ourselves. Tell each, tell the other person about ourselves. So I thought, okay, I'll tell a little bit about me the hypnosis you know just that's about it and then she was telling me about her I couldn't hear her over all the other people because they were laughing and having fun and talking to each other and I couldn't hear what she was saying I could hear little bits and um then the teacher says oh that's it Everything stopped now, and uh, now go around and tell the group about your partner, what they told you about them. <laughs> um, so everyone went round. It was really light. It was funny. It was gentle. It was very. Uh, Jovial, and it was a lovely, a lovely atmosphere. And she talked about me, and she didn't really say much. He does, does hypnosis, and you know, just the basic kind of stuff that I told her. I didn't need to go into details. And then I, I talked about her saying that she was, she's got, she's, uh, I don't know what I said, but just a couple of bits that I remembered. And then the teacher started talking. And 
and then there was a screech of a chair I looked over and the lady that I was paired with she stood up and addressed the classroom and it's almost like she, she had a an essay prepared she said uh, I'm not happy with my introduction that I was given by by him me and she proceeded to go in to talk about all of her qualifications and he's very very qualified and um, I think she was uh, I don't know Rush, not German French or Belgium or something like that and she was going on and that made it a little bit harder to understand her because the accent plus the really low volume I found difficult because I'm partly deaf I'm a little bit deaf in one ear um, and so it kind of is plus of all the background sound I've never I've always never enjoyed being in a a loud environment I still don't I wear headphones when I'm in public generally just to block out the sound it's it so it's you know it's not that I'm I was going to say I'm not trying to make excuses but I am I am literally trying to make excuses that is what I'm doing I'm trying to make as many excuses as possible so that I don't look bad but it doesn't really matter but anyway she's I found it quite funny so I think I laughed not not at what she was saying but the fact that she was saying it the fact that she stood up and wanted everyone's attention and figured that it was very important that everybody knew that she's basically more qualified than the teachers that were teaching us and then she sat down and she looked angry really really angry so at the end of the class you know when everyone kind of we cut to an end I apologised to her I said sorry about that I couldn't hear what you were saying you sound like a mouse and maybe that didn't go down well but like a little Belgian mouse and uh, to be fair if she was to speak through one of those you know those big grammar loudspeaker things you know that the, the people do like when they're addressing an audience outside if she shouted through one of those then she would sound like a, a mouse whispering that gives you an idea what level she was at and plenty to say I mean it's very 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 intelligent and all that stuff and I apologised. I said, "Look, I'm sorry. I didn't. Um, I didn't realise it was uh, hugely serious activity, and um, I didn't catch everything you said. And you know, um, it's very. You know, it's quite. It was quite a loud environment. Uh, mousy, mousy. No, no, I didn't. I couldn't stop myself." Couldn't stop thinking about mice's. <laughs> she said to me. I said, "No, what?" She said, <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Come on, I'm sorry. I didn't didn't mean disrespect. I just um, I genuinely was not interested in what you were saying." <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I said, uh, "I didn't didn't mean to upset you. I'm sorry." And she said, "Oh." that's okay that's okay something like that so she said it was fine and I thought that was it I was wrong I was so wrong she held that grudge for three years 
three whole years. <laughs> and it got to the point where it was actually funny, but it affected other people. Because the way she was treating me, or trying to act towards me, was upsetting people that liked me. And there was a division for three years in that classroom. Very strange, like, well, I don't know what the point was. And I went out of my way to even spend time with her, just to try and to heal the wounds, you know? You know, I, I literally, basically, this is what I literally did. I literally took away the trap, you know? Sort of like, it's safe now. You can come out, it's safe. The, the trap's gone. You don't got to worry about anything. Come on, come on. It's a bit of cheese. And even practice, because she got in her group and there was people that kind of didn't really have anything to do with me because of that, because they sort of were friends with her. So I went out of my way to do a practice group, like practice in the counselling. It's the counselling course, can you believe it? It's kind of uh, behaviour. And uh, I even went into her group with her permission so I could practice with her. So I could, um, I don't know, I just didn't want that, that kind of behavior to, to be part of the experience of doing a degree. And she already had degrees. But, I suppose, I don't know what in. Making Edam. She did seem to like having the sandwiches. I was scared to ask her what was in a sandwich. But I knew. We all knew. We all knew. But um, she... Kind of the whole period for that, that three years, it was just, uh, and even in the last year, the third year, there was one point where we were all sitting around the table in a kind of almost, with the teacher was at the front and we were down the sides and at the back, but the other side of the table, you know, looking on. And the teacher came in, sat down and says, uh, it's up to you, but if you if you want, you can come and sit. If you want to choose, you can come and sit in front of the tables instead of behind. And then people started discussing it and kind of arguing. And I said, I just said, look, I think everyone can just decide for themselves. I think we we're all able to choose whether we want to sit in front of the table or not you know we're adults we can all choose can't we and this the, the mousy stood up <laughs> and said I said what she said I said can you write it down please she said, okay. So she wrote it. So basically, uh, she got a loudspeaker out, pumped up the volume, and she said, her response to me saying, we can all decide for ourselves where we sit, rather than it being a big discussion. We can all decide... She said, speak for yourself. In other words, speak for yourself. Does that mean you can't decide for yourself where you sit? <coughs> She's like, I clearly haven't let it go, have I? I'm still talking about it. <laughs> 
10 years since I actually um, finished the course well it will be 10 years 10 years in May or June this year 10 years since I can never remember that word what's the word when you get your diploma or your certificate your degree um, where you dress up really ridiculously and it's expensive and you're supposed to toss the toss the thing in the air um, apparently you're supposed to toss the hat in the air I misheard and toss you have to toss that's not a salad not tossing a salad but tossing what's that the flat hat you know that flat hat thing beacon deacon board something hard board 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 cupboard I don't know but you know the thing I mean anyway I um I quite enjoyed it really I had a very close friend when I was at, at university and I don't see her anymore but she if it hadn't been for her I would not have got through it uh, so I owe, I owe her my degree and I hope I said thank you I'm sure I did if I didn't then I wish I had but I'm pretty sure I did say thank you but I can see it sometimes distance can give way to a little bit of clarity I mean especially for people that are from Belgium I mean, it's the flattest place on earth isn't it I mean there's the old joke isn't it if you've got binoculars powerful enough you can actually see the back of your head see the back of your own head it's sat flat it's not my joke that's someone else's joke but it's funny so That was weird. That was kind of, and what other people? Oh, so I'm gonna stop. Let's see who else should I talk about from the course. There was this really cool man, and everyone found him hilarious. All the women, and he was funny, and he was, he's older than me. In fact, I would go as far as to say he was probably about my age then that I am now but I might be wrong but he was groovy he was a groovy cat he really was he was a gardener as well as um, learning to be a counsellor or training and he was just one of these people that was lovely you know you know you get someone like that and they're just really nice and if I ever heard him say a, a bad word ever and the teachers loved him I mean really it was almost like Brad Pitt had walked into the room it was he just had this effect on the um, well the teachers for some reason they just absolutely loved him and I'm not sure how the teachers would explain describe me probably problematic I don't know I didn't mean to be but uh, I think I've regressed a little bit being in the classroom setting and I can't be told what to do not by anyone it's just not going to happen 
and I was in a, although it was university, it was held at a college, the course was, and there was a lot of young people at that college straight from school and they were still being treated like school kids and I think that's how the teachers thought that they could te treat us and they couldn't and we let them know quite quickly that they couldn't you know apart from one person who was I think 18 or 19 and another yeah everyone was over 30 and a lot of people were over 40 and over 50 even so the teachers didn't have or the tutors didn't have tutors that starts with a T tutor tutors the they didn't have the power they didn't have any power at all or control over the classroom because they were dealing with adults and they didn't so we kind of let them know pretty quickly what that situation was and who else was there there was this very there was a lady there that was very loud, quite loud, and she'd be happily chat really loudly while the teacher was talking and not have any kind of um, awareness of it or care that she was doing it. And nearly every day she'd turn up late. Every day. She'd just turn up late, walk in. Make loads of noise, getting ready, say hello to people. It's like, it's, even I didn't do that. Well, a couple of times, just for fun, but, you know, I wouldn't normally do it. Who else was there? There was, yeah, there was another, there was a younger man there. He's very tall and he's, I got on well with him. I got on okay with everybody. Um, but there was a couple of, one, one, uh, there was a lady there that I really kind of clicked with in the first year. But then, didn't go downhill for the next two years but we just weren't as close after the first year so I'm not really sure what, what kind of happened there but then I got really close to another person there but the one from the first year was a married lady so you know nothing was ever going to happen there but we were friends but the other one was um, she really liked me and we did have a nothing happened until the course finished is that true? yeah that is true wow yeah, nothing happened until the course finished, I think. But we did spend loads of time together before the course finished. So during the course, I'd be speaking to her on the phone. and Basically, like we were dating, but not dating. Um, so she was just hugely supportive to me. And... I don't think I appreciated her at the time or well, I didn't appreciate how supportive she was being but at the same time um, I didn't want a relationship with anyone 
you know, especially not with someone that I was at college with, because I didn't want to be in a situation where I just didn't want to go in because of someone being there that I didn't want to see. You know, I just ruined the course. I mean, I already had someone in there that I didn't want to see. <laughs> the mousey. But, uh, but, yeah, we stayed friends for a few years and then, yeah, kind of, she moved on to do other things and I suppose in some ways some people would say that my life came to a standstill when I stopped working others who know the truth who know you know what I do would say well, actually I've got I've accomplished a fair bit uh, with all the recordings I've made but it's so that's all personal opinions and it it's all personal opinions so do I do I lisp and if I do the thing is when I was when I had the old uh, Mona about the yawning I became a bit self-conscious for a while now I don't care again I'll yawn or I don't yawn I don't care because I'm just going to be me but now I feel self-conscious a bit about how I sound or my talking or if I've got a you know, a whistle to my some of my words or letters that I say, and I don't want to be self conscious, I really don't. Not when I'm making recordings like this, because this is a personal, private thing. And you might say, Well, it has it private if thousands of people are listening. Well, I get what you mean. In some ways, it's the least private thing I do. But on the same level, I want to just be able to be me. Whatever, whatever that form that takes on that particular recording, it might be me doing silly voices and making up stuff. Or it might be me talking about something or reading out a message that I've received or comment you know it could be any anything but I do I need to have that freedom to just be myself and yeah it kind of puts me in a, a strange position I just don't know. I don't know what to do. So, you know, it's... I don't know, I just, I'm just wondering, get a little bit of feedback. But at the same time, I don't want negative feedback. I figure negative feedback is people that don't listen anymore. And they go away, and then... I just deal with the people that do listen and the people that do like what I do and the stats have increased tremendously over the last uh, well since this year started actually I had over 5,000 downloads yesterday or the day before rather yeah the other day before I'm losing track of which days are which but you know it's lots it's it's going really well from a, a statistical 
perspective. More people are listening, which means I'm guessing if they're coming back, then it's useful. And in a way, you know, it'd be, it's not a bad label to have, is it? You know, for people to say, well, you know, so what was, what was Jason like? He was useful. That might not, it doesn't sound that good actually when I say it out loud. He was useful. What do you mean, what, for cleaning toilets? <laughs> what, what? What for? So maybe a little bit of uh, extra information may be required to uh, embellish that particular phrase so that it makes more sense. Jason's three recordings were useful. But why did he only do three of them then if they were useful? No, free as in F-R-E-E. -E. I'm sorry, I can't help it because you got a lisp. You sound so weird, I didn't know if it was three or three. E -e -e. That's just rude, can you stop? Sorry, did you say you want me to stop or you want me to stop? Can you, that's, that's enough of that. No more thanks. What, no more thanks? Thanks or no more thanks. Will you stop making fun of the way I talk? So yeah, it's a uh, it's a strange one. I mean, in some ways, but. If it was just like, oh, you you list, you got a list, or whatever, and it's annoying, fair enough. It's not fair enough, but like, well, good luck to you if you've you feel the need to tell me that. But if it's disturbing someone's um, benefit benefit from the, if it's preventing someone from benefiting from that particular recording then I am concerned. So yeah, maybe I should do, <laughs> maybe I should do some non-lisp recordings and some lispy ones. So do some specific ones where I'm talking like this, pronouncing every word. So that I don't slur nor whistle at any point when I speak. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't do that. It's just not not really gonna happen if I'm being particularly I like that word particularly honest or completely honest. I shan't, I shan't, I shan't be doing doing that. So yeah, it's uh strange one so if I loved your I love your soft voice but I don't like the way you pronounce words I love your soft word voice but yeah I love your soft voice if you break out I love your soft voice but unfortunately it interferes with me falling asleep <laughs> We did a countdown from 79 to 60. I wanted to do that. 
So I didn't understand why, why were you laughing hysterically? Is it because I was going 79, 76, or 78, whatever one's mixed, 77, and all the way down. You know, sometimes when I'm doing a, um, a sleep session, well, not sometimes, pretty much every time I'm doing a sleep session, I half fall asleep myself. And there's times when I do drift off and I genuinely can't remember what I've already said. And I think that's part of the reason why they work. Because I'm there too. I'm not just sitting wide awake saying, now you're going to fall asleep. and Because I'm not wide awake when I'm doing any of my recordings really. Maybe a little bit more alert when I'm doing the relaxation with stress and anxiety if I'm talking about a subject. And maybe when I make these recordings, sometimes I'm a bit more alert than at other times. I don't feel hugely alert right now. No, 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 no. Mm. I'm trying to think what other messages I got. Oh, I did get a couple of messages. Let me read you these. I was going to go into the website. And these are a couple of reviews that I got. A couple of reviews. Whoops, that's the uh, laptop. Okay. They're both from the same person, actually. But they're from... Uh, for different recordings so the first one is from Lilith and it's from um, been posted on number 302 let me bore you to sleep Jason Newland 15th of January 2020 it's been a while my minion and I had been neglecting to listen for a few weeks however I noticed internally and circadian wise a major difference negative for us in brackets wow it's so noticeable how for the both of us our stress levels rose definitely have to get back into the loop on the frame of moving man oh man I relate I moved from the city to the middle of nowhere USA and uh Okay, I'm just, just reading it. Thank you for sharing that and the new uploads. They are truly a medication for the non-stop gear grinding brain at night. So thank you, Lilith. Um, and there's another one that she posted. This is for Anger Reduction 2017. And it says, no thank you. I thought it was a no thank you, but it was no thank you. Um, I just found this session and finished listening right now. I have a lot of frustration tests, a lot of frustration tests that cross my path. I believe I should listen to this every day 
when dedicating some quality time to myself. I'm going to share this with my minion and can only say, and I can only say with much optimism that it shall help the both of us greatly. So thank you, that's, that's nice. So I've had a few, um, a few different ones. I mean, I've told, I don't, I think I've read most of them out to you over the time. I've had a couple from, uh, one from Andrea on the 14th of January, it was a few days ago, 2020. Not sure what the title. Not sure what to title this review. These recordings have helped me deal with my anxiety, instead of ignoring it as I usually do. Thank you. And um, that was regarding the relaxation for stress and anxiety, panic attack ones, podcast. So, thank you, um, Andrea. That's very kind. So if you'd like to leave a review, if you're still awake, if you're not awake, fine. But definitely a video review would be brilliant because, as I said, it's costing me $15 a month just to offer this service, to have this app on my website, $15 a month. So I'd like to try and use it, if possible. And... Uh, because you know, I've got a couple of videos on here, and from let's have a look. Who is it? Rachel Elizabeth, and Natalie Merkley, and Molly. you know it's, it's brilliant I love I love it you know I look at Molly and I you know, I watch those videos I watch Natalie's one and you know and to the others it's just nice to hear the kind words or the how it's benefiting and also it's it, what I like well, one of the things I, I'm, I think is quite groovy, there's a couple of things that I think is quite groovy. First of all, that I've got listeners or fans, listeners in, in the other side of the world, you know, in Australia, New Zealand, Canada. And it's really cool, you know, the... Um, I've got a few people like in Australia, New Zealand and Canada that really uh, seem to like like my stuff. As well as lots of people in Europe like Norway, Russia, Amsterdam, um, Germany, like every basically every country you can pretty much think of there's people listening to me. But another thing I really like is I've also got more people in England or, you know, Britain, people in Scotland, Wales that are listening to me because that's what I wanted for years. I catered mainly to America. That was my main audience and it kind of still is really. Like statistically, I get more people in America listening to me than any other, than all the other countries pretty much put together. But I'm so pleased that I've got more people listening to me in my part of the world, you know, in in my country than I used to. So it's, I mean, basically the audience has just grown and grown and grown. But it's nice to, it's just nice to know that I'm able to have people from my own part of the world listening, as well as it's brilliant to know that people from other parts of the world are listening. 
the, the percentage of uh, people from England or Britain was so small the percentage was really really minute in the past now it's grown so yeah I feel grateful for that so please leave a video review yes 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 and also the competition is still going this month if you leave um, if you share any of my my posts onto Facebook share them onto your own page or onto a group uh, then you'll be entered into a competition where you get to win a flash drive with all of my Let Me Boy To Sleep recordings on and at the moment I think I'm about 404 this might be 404 304 this might be number 305 something like that so there's still another 10 12 days till the end of the month So that's that's many many hours of me boring you lots and lots and lots of hours I wonder how many hours should we have a look how many hours is it so far let's have a look I'm gonna search there's a way of doing it there is oh there is I know how to do it. There we go. So, according to this, it's 304 recordings of the Let Me Boy to Sleep. So, this is 305. And I've got 335 hours and 17 minutes so far so this is another hour and 12 minutes or something to add on so you're probably looking about 350 hours I guess 35, 40, yeah probably about 350 hours worth of me being boring and you get to win that you get a chance to win it just by sharing my Facebook posts you know the the recordings and the recordings I make so give it a go as they say you got to be win it to in it bin it I don't know, something like that. So I'm going to go, thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.